unmute. Okay, we're on. Can you see it? You're good. Yep, you're good. Okay. Thank right, you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, you were on. We are on. Okay, so that is on. Good. How are you, Frank? Good, good. So the recording is on. The video is on as well. So we are set to go in case anyone joins us. All right. What is this? Come on. Oh. Okay, there it is. All right. It's a little warm in here. No. No, I didn't see it. I don't get the Herald. I'll have to make a copy from your. Who, me? Oh, oh. That's how Jen had it set up. Oh, the scanner? Oh. Oh, I didn't, I thought you were talking about this. Jen set this up for me. Oh, okay, I'll have to go make a copy. Okay. Because I don't get the Herald. You always seem to know the Herald news when I get here with it. But I'll remember now that you don't get the Herald. Yeah, we. I stopped it while we were um, close. So not to waste Okay, if you're not fully vaccinated, you have to wear a mask. Just so everyone knows. Okay. Okay. Fully okay. vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay.
that might be different for them, but for town buildings, you're on an honor system. Just remember, we are on Zoom. Right now? Yes. Okay. And it is recording. I told you before. We are on Zoom. I have to, I was instructed to start it um, before the meeting began. So. Nice little plastic containers for your vaccine. Oh, I'll have to ask one of my contacts from there. Where did you get it at? From your doctor? I think they should give them when you get your vaccine because uh, you're going to need to prove that. So huh. you folks know, after I sent the agenda out, Jen told me that it was open to the public. Yeah. So I did a revised one. Yep. But I didn't bother sending them out to you folks. Do we know if Lois and our and Anne are coming? Because do you have a quorum with three? Yeah, I don't know, Juliet. The door is open, so I would say they usually here early. Yeah, it's seven o two. Good about calling me too. So. Well, you know what? Three. You only have three. Call the meeting to order, and if they come in, they'll just join us, you know. Okay, roll call Ian. Okay. Here. Frank. Here. Tina. Here. Okay. Um, the approval of the minutes on May 17th, which was a Zoom meeting. Uh, are there any changes or corrections? So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. I'd like to make a correction. Oh, okay. Um, Victoria, these minutes are available to people on computers and other meetings, correct? I'm Tina. Oh, why did you say Victoria? Victoria's last name is not on the minutes. So nobody will know who Victoria is. Oh, it's Halberg. Oh, are you talking about Victoria, the new assistant director, or Victoria Fagan from the architect's office? But she was not here at the meeting. I think I think it was Victoria Fagan that was introduced in the minute. It was from the architect. It was from the architect. On page four, the first item. I don't have your minutes. I don't get that. I just got the agenda. Oh, okay. I didn't know Victoria's last Okay, which Victoria are we talking about? Helberg. H E L L B E R G. Center assistant. I wrote that down. She's assistant senior. She is assistant director. Assistant senior center director. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
approval of the, of the changes? Yes. No. Thank you. Second. Is that you? Okay. Are you accepted? You accepted? Oh, okay. All right. Um, we have no audience of citizens. I don't think they're religious. This one is just recording? Yes, it is. I just wanted to make sure there was nobody on there. Somebody they could come to the meeting via yeah. Oh, via the Zoom. Yeah. And you'd be able to see that. Right, our phone call phone thing would show up. But no one is there. Um unfortunately my minutes are my minutes. My report is not done. I had a family emergency today, so I was gone most of the day. So I will get those two. Um, the, yeah, Juliet. But I can just tell you that um, some few things. Um, we have new evacuation meet spots um, that I've had the fire marshal put into place. Uh, you'll notice one as you're going out. There's one, it's a yellow sign. Um, people were questioning about it on uh, Berlin Talks or Berlin Buzz. Um, it's right out here as you're going out the driveway. And then we have another one that they placed over on this side. So if we were had to evacuate the building, folks in the building would go to either of the sites and the ploys with two to make sure that everyone was out of the building and so safe, safely, yeah, safely away from the building. Okay. Um, also, I have requested new ADA compliant signs for our rooms because if you notice, I think the only signs that we have with Braille are the ones for the bathrooms. We're supposed to have them for every room. So um, Jen is working on that because she is the, I think she's the ADA compliant officer for the town. So she's working on getting those um, made and into place. So that I could tell you. You're supposed to have signs with either raised letters or braille. So somebody that is visually impaired can write either if they know braille, if not, then they can do the, the letters and, and that would indicate to them what room that they're at. Right. So that is being, um, done currently while well, we were working on that. Okay, and the uh, senior center will be open to the public starting Tuesday, July 6th. And we will be bringing back some, not all programs yet, majority of them, but um, at, during the summer, we're not gonna be bringing back any of the same touch um, programs like cards like Mahjong, um, Pokino, um, anything where there's a share touch. And also um, we're not bringing back any type of serving, any type of food um, in the center uh, during the summer month. This is like our phase one of reopening. We wanna see how things go, um, you know, enforcing um, mask wearing by those that are unvaccinated social distancing still, not six feet, but still social distancing some. Um, so July 6 is our reopen date. And we are putting together a calendar as to what's coming back. Um, they'll be on the same days. They just might be in a different location, some of the programs because of space, okay? No, I still have to, there's a new person in charge there now. Um, Steve Sutcliffe was our, my contact. He has retired. There's uh, Rose, which Rose and I have spoken briefly, but we um, need to talk about that. It might come back where we do like a grab and go, where it's more like a box lunch, kind of a cold lunch, um, but not the hot lunches yet. Okay. 
What about people that would normally eat there and can't get out? Do they still give, send them, give them food? Meals, well, I have, meals? From, the, from the beginning, when we closed down, I have offered anybody that came here um, during the week for congregate meals, I offered either grab and go where they could come and pick it up or meal delivery. Nobody picked grab and go. I did have, I have put a lot of people on meal delivery. There are a lot of people getting meal delivery and I have uh, a contact um, through Hartford Healthcare that they have assumed the cost for some of these people for over a year for free meal delivery. Now, is that just meals at the senior housing or? No, every, every, all like over town. All over. Yep, whoever has requested it, um, I have gotten them on that program and they have assumed the cost. And she was going to end it June, <coughs> excuse me. She was going to end it June 30th. She has decided to extend it. I'm waiting to hear back for how long. Right. So she started uh, last April and we have, some people have gone on it. Some have gone off, some have gone back on it. Um, but we have quite a bit of people on it that are getting free meals through Meals on Wheels. So some are getting three days, some are getting five days, some are getting seven days. And they don't pay anything? Nope. And that's through Hartford? This is Hartford Healthcare. They have a grant. And so um, Karen Pagliera, who is their, I don't know what her official title, has something to do with like community outreach. She is the one that offered to cover the costs um, through her grant. Yeah. They're not prepared here. No. They're, they're like the Meals on Wheels that other people, um, you know, that, that they were getting. But there are some that are getting it now because it makes it easier for them. And, you know, um, some of the folks next door who were coming here for meals now are getting Meals on Wheels. And they get two, they get, when you get Meals on Wheels, you get two meals. You get a hot meal and then you get like a cold pack. So you end up with actually, you could have two meals on it out of the delivery. Um, some people have stopped it because they said it was too much food. I had a friend that would say one thing and he would think a big pot of soup or something. Yeah, they, <laughs> some people have stopped it because they said it was too much food yeah. and they didn't know what to do with that, you know. And I would try to say, well, just cut down your days maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, but still have this convenience because it's nice it's only like a sandwich and milk or right something, right right well they yeah they give like cookies or fresh fruit um fruit cocktail juice milk um sometimes they'll do like little egg salad tuna salad ham salad and then a bread two slices of bread so it varies but um and to some it has really helped them a lot yeah, and they've been, I mean, Hartford Healthcare have been very generous in covering the cost. That is really great. Yeah. They're doing that, so. You know? so that's where we are with our meal program. Transportation is up and running and it's getting busier. We are also um, have started to um, expand our service area where we're not just doing medicals, Berlin and New Britain. Um, we have started taking people to, um, like we took a few to the VA in Newington for um, vaccinations. Um, we've taken folks to Cromwell. There's new medical buildings there. We've gone to Southington, um, new medical building there. We're doing it now while we're slower and trying to uh, see if we can work it um, out. Um, so that we can continue to expand our service area. Because everybody doesn't have doctors in New Britain. Yeah, we go there anyways. We've been going there for a while because part of it is New Britain and part of it's Plainville. So we've been going there for a while. But now we're going 
Um, Yukon Medical, Mid-State, we're going. Um, so we're, we're trying to work it out. Wow, Is, Mid-State's not that close. It's, a, it's just on the Turnpike, down the yeah, Chamberlain yeah. Highway. Yeah. yeah. It's, on, it's on Lewis Ave. We wouldn't probably go if it was further in Meriden, like towards Wallingford, that we're not going to do. Same thing with, you know, Weathersfield. We'll go to this, maybe Silestine, but if it's a Silestine down towards Hartford, we're probably not going to go. So we've been, we've been, we're not advertising it, but as the calls come in, we evaluate and, you know, I speak to the driver and between the driver and I, we decide if it's something we can do. And for the most part, we have been doing a lot of new uh, destinations, so. Four and a half miles to Mid-State, to Newburgh. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, right. If you think about when you have to go to North Mountain Road or you have to go to hospital uh, for special care, that's a distance too. Yeah. So, um, but this is something I always wanted to do was to expand our service area. And so we're doing it and it's working. Yeah. Do they have to prove vaccination to get on the bus? No, but they um, public transportation, you still have to wear a mask. Whether you're vaccinated or not. They have to wear a mask. Yep. Yep. Well, so does the driver. That's we're just not taking temperatures. And as of June 30th, we're going to stop having them sign the waivers that the town put, had put in place. So. It's easier to just have everyone wear a mask. Yeah, no, that's through the state. You have to wear a mask yeah. on any type of public transportation, whether you're vaccinated or not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, anything else that I think of, it'll be on my report that I submit to Juliet. Item is the proposed senior center parking rec center. We, I went to the uh, after our last meeting it was on a Monday, Tuesday. I went to the um, council meeting and I talked about the senior center, uh, center community center. And when I talked to Donna today, they still have not appointed a committee for the senior center community center. And when I went to that meeting that night, I requested that they uh, get a committee together and um, so that we would be able to move forward. Well, the, they did set up two dates for the public forum. One is tomorrow night, one is the 30th of June. I did request from Arush that they do one uh, forum here at the Senior Center during the day for the seniors. So, because everyone is not going to be able to get into this uh, New Britain High, I mean, Berlin High um, Auditorium. I'm going to have a difficult time tomorrow night. I will go tomorrow night. I probably will not go on the 30th. But um, I just don't think it's a convenient place. Maybe for the kids, it's probably a good area because they can have it for them, you know. Well, I'm just hoping we get a good turnout at the public forum because... I think when you make it difficult for people to park and get in, they're not going to go. So hopefully I had asked if we could have the one on the 30th at McGee because I thought that would be easier in and out, all flat parking and everything. But I understand that everything was already set. So they are going to add another one, but they haven't finalized the plans yet. Here, yeah, yeah they are adding another that. one. I don't know if it's here, but I believe so. Yeah, because I said we have to depend on the support of the seniors, right? And they have to be able to come and listen. So, uh, that will be he said he would talk to you about that. So, let me see. I guess that is, uh, I don't know when they're going to get this committee ready. We want to. Have, and I don't know, it would have to go to referendum. When I talked to the council, I said that we, once we 
break ground, I would like to, to see a big sign up in the front saying we're building a better Berlin for all citizens because it's going to be young and old. So that is going to be a, a good, it's going to be like the gem of Berlin. And I told them that too. So hopefully, and today, there was a very nice article about the information forums that will be tomorrow night. This is in today's Herald. Um, tomorrow night and the one on the 30th. She mentions both. She did a very nice article, Ms. Erica, which was very nice of her. So I was happy to see that. Good thing I have my informant. Kay calls me with, as soon as the paper comes. And I cut it out, and I'm keeping track of all of these. So that's the. Does anybody have any questions on the senior center recreation um, park and rec? I've worked closely with Donna, who is a park and rec uh, commissioner for Park and Rec Commission, and uh, she's really, really easy to work with. And we have some good ideas, but we have to get the start, you know. And the committee is going to be very important. And I said that to them. I said, you know, who they choose for a committee is going to be very important because it has to be people with a vision to be able to go forward, look at what the center is going to be, and know how important it's going to be for all age groups. So um, that's what I said to the council. I said, you know, we need your voice and your vote because they have to be able to, you know, know and, uh, and appoint the right people. They can't be people that really don't care, you know. They have to be people that are as enthusiastic and and want to have this go forward as much as we do. So hopefully that little talk will be good. And, you know, having a vision, and I said this to them that night, over all the years, it was people with visions that had visions that did the new library, the new high school, the new, you know, all of that. Because when I came to town, I paid my taxes on Worthington Bridge, you know, and my dog license on the Patterson uh, Way there. So it has to be people that can see or see that know that they're doing, they have to be able to see this big complex and know that so many people are going to. Right way to go I mean, you have somebody voting from the heart. Just, yes. Uh, it's just a physical vote. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And that wants to see the investment in the town, you know? And I know that it's it's probably going to be costly, but, I mean, everything is costly. So, you, you know, it depends on what you are looking to do for your town. And I think that's important. So, hopefully, the committee will be appointed soon. You said that they have to go to referendum to appoint yes. the committee? No, not to appoint the committee. Okay. They can appoint the committee, but the vote has to go to referendum. Yeah. And I don't know when they're going to be able to do that because if we do these two public forums, I don't know if they'd be able to do the referendum in November or if they have to wait till the spring. So we'll see about that. But first, we have to get our committee together. Yeah. <laughs> Talk it up I think the article in the paper that it's give, could give that some leverage. You know, let people read it. They can't go backwards. That see that's. You know, know, I mean, you run the people that read you, the current or even our, our own papers. That's right. Are we going to go backwards? You know, I mean, it's like pushing forward. That's it's right. Like leverage in the right direction. And even the young kids are getting excited about this because it's going to have the indoor track. It's going to have a pool. You know, it's going to be for all ages. And that's what I said to them. I said. It's it's just going to be a, something that the whole town, town exactly. is going to benefit. I mean, it's not just I mean, benefiting the entire town. Yep. That's right. That's right. So I think it's going to be a good thing, but we just have to get a committee appointed and get started. And and I love working with Donna because she has been so, she's just as enthusiastic about it as I am. So that's mm -hmm. good. You know, it's good to work with somebody like that that also has a vision, you know. When the architect was here last time, didn't he say he thought November was too soon for the yeah. to the record? Yeah, he, he was talking about April. Yes, and I said that when I went to the meeting with the council. I said, selfishly, I would like to see it in November, 
but I know that we have to have these public forums and you have to get public support. So, you know, to do that, you have to do the referendum, you know? So I, I can see where that has to be as much as I would like to see it in November so that they can get going. And that, that's not gonna happen. We have to, you know, take our time and make sure the whole, a lot of people are informed so talk it up if you know anybody. I was so shocked when I was out one day and two women approached me and I mentioned it to them and they said, oh, we didn't hear anything about that. So I was, I was so surprised because maybe because I'm so invested in it, you know, I can't believe that there's someone in town that doesn't know about it. Well, I guess there is. So when you talk to people, make sure that, you know, give them your voice. Are they going to have an article like in Bernie Citizen? This is from the Herald. That's from the Herald. Yeah. I because know. I think there's a lot of people that don't get the paper anymore because it's so expensive. Not only is it yeah. expensive, there's a lot of Bristol news. Because they combined yes. with the Bristol press. Yeah. Everything is across the country. Yeah. So a lot of people do not get the Herald. And I'm really surprised, even for obituaries, they always put them in the current. You know? Yeah, I could, I could let Donna know, and then Donna could reach out to Nadia from the citizen. Yeah. Well, that would be great to have a that citizen. Goes every house, so that yeah. Be, that's right. That's right. So that's a good idea. Right. Okay. Well, the media center. Senior housing. Um, I talked to Joe Bajorski last day. I'm a little bit, he and I, the, uh, Paper, the letter that we all signed went up, out and that was delivered. He delivered, he picked it up at my house in the morning and uh, he delivered it that day to Hartford. So he said to me last night that um, things are looking good. He said by January or February, financing should be in place for closing on the loans that they have to take. And he said, if all goes well with the loans and the grants by September to December, that should all be in place. And then if that happens, construction could start in the spring of 2022. And he said it would be approximately two years to complete. The Knights of Columbus, the old Knights of Columbus building is scheduled for demolition in the spring of 2022. I just want to say something here. Um, oh, and Joe Bajorski said he would like to attend. We have our public hearing here. He asked me to let him know because he wants to attend for the um, Senior Center Community Center because that's going to involve him. Because if we move on, this building belongs to the Housing Authority and he will be doing something else with it. But he would like to be here when we do that public forum here. So I said that, not a problem, we'd be happy to have him, you know? Um, now, I just wanna mention that he mentioned to me that through all of this, applying for the grant, the letter going out, the times that he has appeared at the uh, Capitol to try to secure a grant. Now, I realize she hasn't been in office too, Long, but Donna Beach has not reached out to him. And she's our representative here in Berlin. So I feel he was disappointed. And he said the person that did reach out to him, who isn't even in office anymore, Joe Aaron Simmons. And he said, Joe said, anything I can do to help you move things along. And Joe still has a lot of contacts and connections, you know. And I thought that was very nice of him to offer that to Joe Bajorski because this has been a long haul and especially for the council. I mean, she's been on the council. Now she's our rep. rep. Um, she knows this is important, senior housing. And I told them at the meeting that I had to have two separate presentations, one for the uh, housing and one for the senior center, community center. But when I was doing the housing presentation, I told them that there was 40 people on the list for senior housing. 
Now that's 40 right now. Who knows? There's going to be more by the time the year goes by. Or <coughs> and they were quite surprised that there was that many people on the list. So uh, I was glad that I brought that up and glad to make them aware of that. And like I said, she has been at council meetings. I've appeared at the council meetings certainly more than once talking about senior housing. And uh, he was disappointed that she had not been jumping him to try to assist him in any way. So what about our other state rep, Kathy? Is she still our state rep? We never hear from her, never see her. Yeah, I thought she, she helps me, Barbara, she helps me a lot. Yes, yeah, she does. Well, has she asked you any questions about this? No, but she has helped me with people's individual problems with different state agencies, uh, energy assistance. She has helped me a lot. Well, See, people don't realize that behind the scenes, but she has, <coughs> I've called her late at night when there's been issues with residents in town and she takes my calls and she works with me. Well, but I'm know. saying, so but I'm saying, we know that. You know, we never see her or hear from her. So, how would we know that? I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm glad you're telling me. I'm her. telling you because I have heard that about her and it's so untrue. I had a group of, I can give you examples. I had a group of people that did not receive their energy assistance. Uh -huh. And I reached out to Kathy, and because she has the, the different contacts. She helped them get their benefits. I had a woman, a senior that wasn't getting her unemployment when the pandemic started. Kathy reached out to the Department of Labor and got that all straightened out for her. Recently, she helped me with somebody that had COVID and had no transportation to his dialysis because nobody would take him because he was COVID positive, but he needed to go to dialysis. So she was working with me and another agency to get the gentleman transportation for his dialysis. So she does. When I reach out to her and say, hey, Kathy, can you help me? This is the issue. She takes care of it. She makes, she has her contacts up at the state with the different departments, agencies, and she's come through. Well, the next time I talk to Joe, I will mention that to him. Yeah, because, um, I mean, I could say to her, you know, can you get involved with our housing authority for our um, housing project? Yeah. You know, I mean, I've reached, yeah, she, she would. She should just reach out to him because I think that would be, I think. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, you know? Do you have a number for Joe? I don't have it here with me, but yeah, because I, I know she would help and she has contacts like Joe or Simulitz does. I was she's very happy that Joe has She's like, been up there a number of years. Yes, she has. Yeah. And you know, you don't ever see or hear from her in Berlin. No, but she's so she's, she's Berlin and Meriden. She does part of Berlin and she does she has part of Berlin and then part of Meriden. That's how they they divided it. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you I have worked with her and she has come through repeatedly to and help me. Good. To, right. Um, him and just say, you know, I'm available to you. If right. You I'm gonna. I'm gonna reach out to her. Pair of hands or another pair of ears. Yeah. And, you know, because it's been a long haul, and I feel bad for him. He has really been trying. Right. And things are looking good now, and I would never do anything that would disrupt what he has already done. Right. But. He, but yeah, I'll reach out to Kathy and. Yeah. Uh, and maybe she could just reach out to him, and right. that would make him feel better. Right. He feels like he's not the lone voice, you know? Yeah, and I'm sending a picture of that news article to Donna Bovey. Oh, that's good. And then, and I ask. Did, I did talk to Donna about that a picture today. Yeah, I'm going to send it to her. Yeah. She is so easy to work with. I am just so happy. And I said, I mean, it's not going to be up to me who's on the committee and who's going to be chosen for the committee. But I really feel that she should be the chairperson. Yeah, she's. Uh, because and she, she has the, the experience. She she was a CFO, chief financial officer of two big companies really? in her career. Yeah. And doesn't she work now? I think no, she's, she's retired. Oh. 
Well, I want to tell you that she was very instrumental in getting the new softball field up at Sacred yeah. Park for the girls. That was years people talked about it, talked about it, and then now it's there, and that was a good thing. So she was very. She's excited. also on the board for the um, Hall of Fame, her and her husband. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Well, like I said, I think she should chair the committee. Yeah. And I said to her, if you, you know, if you would be willing to do that, right. I said I would certainly help you in any way that I could. Yeah, she's I a go-getter. Else I need to um, talk about here. Well, I guess did anybody? I don't have anything else. I told you everything about this that I could think of for those things. Does anybody have any questions? For the senior center or the park and rec thing? <coughs> Yes. Yes. Your drive-through experience has been ruined. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, I have heard it from a number of people. <coughs> oh, and that is something I wanted to, to um, say too in my uh, report is that um, I am going to keep. A, doing a drive, at least one drive through a month because I am reaching people that will not be coming into the center, but will come to the drive throughs And I'm also going to be keeping um, my virtual classes like yoga and unwind because I'm reaching people that aren't coming to the center, but are benefiting from the program. So we're going to be kind of like a hybrid of programs and events. We'll still do drive throughs we'll do our virtual, and we'll do our in-person. Do a lot of people sign up for the virtuals? Um, for the yoga and unwind. The other, um, they signed up for, uh, in the beginning, like for the, the Healthy Living Collective when they did the statewide senior center uh, virtual events. Um, the first one, we probably, we were one of the centers that had the most people sign up. We had like 43 people sign up for that virtual event. Yeah. Then it has kind of dwindled down. Um, but, you know, since we've been doing the drive throughs and we've been doing also our pop-up 10 events, people are coming to that. You know, we're doing park a lot, bingo, bingo they're coming. Is that a pop-up 10 event? <coughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. We call it a pop of ten in case I have to put up a tent because it's <laughs> because sunny and, or hot out. <coughs> but we've had, you know, um, I got a tickle. <coughs> yeah, sometimes around here, I think it's certain tree pollen because I don't get it at home. I get it here um, at the center. But um, like chair meditation and journaling, people came to that. Uh, our rock painting, people came to that. Our, our uh, blacktop banter, the guys come to that. Our parking lot bingo, they come to that. To Wednesday, I'm doing repotting houseplants. I got people signed up for that. Um, the walking club is new. And we have a good, you've seen them. We have a good crowd for that. They're, they're enjoying. And we're getting, we're getting different people, people that never came out to the center before. So that's good. <laughs> and they're going to different locations. Yes. They were down yep. at Veterans Park a couple of days. Yeah. And then last week they weren't there. Yeah. We kind of missed them, but they were <clears> over <throat> somewhere. I don't think they went to Timberland or something last like Yeah. Week. <clears throat> every, every walk, they do about a mile. Yeah, and you go at your own pace. And there's usually two staff with them. So Cheryl's up front with the faster walkers and then either um, <coughs> Victoria has gone or even last week, Jen went because Victoria was off and I stayed here in man the center. So, um, but they're gonna try different trails and it's gonna be, you know, people have to determine their ability 
and if they can do it or not. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But we will go back till you know, like Veterans Park, because that's an easier walk for some of the people. Too, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, because I thought about walking club, and I know she walks and does trails. So I said, would you be willing to do that? And she loves it. <laughs> so. I think it's so cute. All those little painted rocks on the way up. The yeah. Path. I noticed those. Yeah, that was from our rock. That's our rock. That so <coughs> our kindness rock garden. So if you want to paint any on your own and add to it, please do. Yeah. <laughs> Black top banter. Well, we were going to do it up in the black top um, where I put out chairs and, and the guys come, they bring their coffee and they just sit and talk. But we moved it down here in the grass area. I set up a table. They sit around it, a big table, and they bring their own coffee and they sit and talk. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's still at McDonald's. I see them. They sit outside because they can't sit inside. Oh, really? You can't go inside? No. Not McDonald's. Not McDonald's, not Burger King. You could go in and order, but you can't sit. No. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw some of the, the seniors sitting out at McDonald's at the patio tables. Yeah. Well, no, another center had done it. So I said, oh, let's try it here. And, and it worked. Yeah. I yeah. think that's very good for the guys because they used to enjoy sitting yeah. in here having coffee and you know talking about things from the town and sports yeah. and stuff like that. And I think that a lot of them miss that. I did see well they they got together a number of times. Um they arranged it themselves and they would go to breakfast or they would go to lunch. So they came here, they did it one day. The next week they decided they would go to lunch, so they went to lunch. I think I think the avenue. They were going to do it today, but I think it was too muggy and a few of them weren't coming. So the other ones didn't come, um, but they'll be here next week. They come every Monday. Well, that, yeah. They so, enjoy yeah, they do. Yeah. They enjoyed that. Very good. Well, I, I, does anybody else have anything that they want to contribute? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many people have asked? Because they know I'm coming in here. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea when regular bingo will start inside? July. But it's going to be different. So. How are you going to do that? It's going to be two to a table. We're not going to be able to do five or four to a table. Yeah. So. No reason they can't work. Yeah. So. It's going to start July. Eight. We're working on our calendar right now, Victoria and I, uh, coming up with a calendar. So everything is coming back, but except for setback will come back in the fall. And I have somebody working on that to see who's returning, who's not returning. Um, card playing, no, no um, Bokino, no Canasta, no Cribbage, no Sep, no you know, morning guys, golfers, playing cards. Um, Why is that? Because people have to handle them? Yeah, yeah. We're looking into that, Frank. Yeah, we're we're looking at, we're, Joe and I have to talk about that because you're not the only one that has brought that up. Um, I have to see how many people we can take on a bus. So. Well, we enjoy them. Yeah. Especially during the summer, down to the to the shore, yeah, yeah, that is on our uh, to, to to do list talk because somebody else brought it up too about lunch bunch. Um, but yeah, so everything else is coming back except for coffee hour, lunch, and the ones where you share the same cards or tiles. It's no Scrabble, no Mahjong. Probably till the fall. The bingo, print sheets or yeah, or we could do our cards and then they sit quarantined, like we do our books. You leave them on the table and they sit out. No, no. Yeah, like we've been doing with our books, people coming into the library, 
they sit out and then Kay comes after so many days and puts them back. That's what Peck has been doing. So we've been doing the same thing. So, yeah. 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 That's why they've been coming to park a lot bingo. And, you know, there we've been only doing five, six games. Um, we don't charge them. We've been giving out prizes instead of giving out cash. We've been given a refreshment and each week we get more and more people. So, and they like it. They sit in the shade. It's been nice weather, you know, so they've had they fun. Some own bring their own table. chair. If not, we, we put out a stack of chairs. Um, we give them clipboards. We give them markers. Um, they have their paper bingo cards and away they go. They enjoyed it. So we have run into one of the Mahjong ladies out at the market and she asked me about that. So cards will not be coming back right away. No. I'll tell you no, probably not till the fall. Yeah. For cards. Yeah. Well, at least some of the things are coming back and the people can right. enjoy that. And that's very good. And yeah. I think it's good that we're going to be like a hybrid where we're doing different ones so that we keep, you know, the people that want to stay home virtual the people that want to just do the drive throughs and the people that want to come inside. Everybody has their own comfort level. Do you find so, that there's a lot of people who do not want to come in? I believe there will be, yeah. Yeah, because I think people want to know that people are vaccinated. And since it's kind of like an honor system, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm hoping that people will be honest about it. And if they're not vaccinated, that they wear their mask. You Just know? Just like at the grocery store. Right. You know? right. They tell you if you're not vaccinated, right. wear your mask. And right. so, like, I know all of the staff is vaccinated for except for one. One of us is not vaccinated fully. So, but they are required to wear a mask. So, mm -hmm. you have to wear masks in here even if you're vaccinated? No, if you're fully vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask in a town building. If you are not vaccinated, you do. Whether you're an employee or a visit, you know, a resident visiting, the rule is the same. You know, it's so funny, no matter where you go, I always have my mask in my hand because yeah. you don't know if you have to put it on. Yeah, yeah. You don't right. Know what to do, you yeah, know? It's better to be safe than Absolutely. sorry. Absolutely. So. No, that's true. Guys, you can raise your hand. You can come in and inside the plexiglass and the mask on and they're talking and you can't figure out what they're saying. All right. I saw a guy at Stop and Shop. He looked like he was going to work. He had a mask and he had gloves and he had, I don't know. I was, I, and he kept looking at me because I didn't have a mask on, but you're not required if you have the vaccination, you know? Um, you have that vaccination. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm fully vaccinated, but some places I still wear my mask. Just comfort level. Yeah, I still wear my mask. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 right. 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 You never know, you know. Okay, uh, I guess no one has anything else to contribute, right? So, mm -hmm. is there any old business? Mm -hmm. I think we did. I think we covered a lot. Any, any new business? Yeah, yeah, we covered We did very good tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make it. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay, second? Very good. That was a good meeting. I'm glad we're done early because we're supposed to have a meeting. Yeah, it looks like it's been in there. Oh, you're I got a long walk back there. I don't want to get soaked. That's true. That's true. But it's supposed to be later, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that what they said? Later. You never know.